Hello YouTube! One of the many reasons I like using Excel for managing my finances regards customization. This video will highlight different ways that you can safely customize your Excel checkbook. We'll look at what you can safely change along with the changes to avoid. This video can be helpful for both users of my 2024 version and the 2025 version of the Excel checkbook. In this video we'll cover what you can safely change in the register worksheets, changes to avoid or things that will break the spreadsheet, customizing categories in the frequently used payees list, adding more rows for the future transaction list, and adding more rows for a register. Now a quick safety tip before we even begin, I'd recommend making a extra copy of your checkbook. You know, just use the file, save as menu, and just you know, make a uh, second copy, a backup copy, before making any substantial changes to your, your working copy of the spreadsheet, just in case. All right, well, here in the register, we're going to look at uh, four different things. We're going to look at you know, being able to safely change colors, apply a currency format, change the font, insert additional columns, and, and where is a good place to, to do that. And before we talk about uh, inserting any additional columns, just a quick reminder, uh, please do not rename any of the column headings, as doing so will break the dashboard and the report screen. All right, well, let, let's start with colors. So all of these registers are formatted as a table, and so as long as your cursor is in one of the cells of the table, you should have a menu choice for table design. And under the table design menu, you have uh, different table styles that you can pick from. If you click the uh, drop down arrow over here, you've got uh, light versions, medium versions, dark versions, and you can absolutely just you know, hover your mouse over those and you know, see some different uh, options to pick from. You can even you know, do some further customization after picking one of these. For example, if I were to pick this uh, green choice here, you can then also still highlight your mouse over, let's say, this header row, and then go back to the home menu and choose a different uh, color from the list. I might pick a extra dark or close to extra dark uh, green. Okay, also regarding colors, you can certainly uh, color or change the colors for any of the top areas up here. If you wanted a different uh, colored background, if you just click, hold down your mouse into this uh, uh, dark area here, you know, you can just visit then the background color button and, you know, choose a, you know, different shade of, of background that you might like. All right, let's next talk about applying a currency format. The spreadsheet does not have any currency formatting to, to make it a little bit more universal, uh, regardless of which country you might be in. But certainly you can apply a currency format. So a couple different tips related to that. Uh, with our mouse here at the seam between the column headings and the dark area above, we should get a dark black arrow. And when we have that dark black arrow and we click, it will highlight that whole column. And then we could go visit the number formatting choice up here and you might be a fan of the, the accounting style or maybe you're a fan of the currency style and this should apply whatever currency format is applicable for your particular country. Now this is something you would need to do uh, for uh, for all the different columns that you'd like to have that uh, currency formatting in so I'll just go ahead and as an example click and apply that currency format for my withdrawal deposit and balance columns. Okay, another option you might want to explore is changing the font. Maybe you don't like the Arial font. So a quick way to change the font, you know, we, we could just highlight all of the columns. That, would, that, that will certainly be safe to do. Uh, or if you want to just um, do it for the table row entries, if your cursor is just somewhere in this table and you hold down the control key and hit the letter A, that will select all of the text in the table. And then we could visit the font menu and, and choose a different font. For example, if I pick this uh, Bookman old style, you know, we see that the entire uh, checkbook register has changed to that font. All right, now personally, I'm not a fan of that particular font, so I'm going to use my undo button to undo that change. All right, let, let's next talk about where you might safely insert a new column that you uh, have an interest in. And before you do go to insert a new column, I recommend that you turn on the reconcile mode so that you can see where these other uh, cells are and the impact that you would have if you were to insert a column. For example, if I were to insert a column here between G and H, you know, that's going to cause just extra space in between 
the uh, withdrawals found numbers in my new column, which it might look a little weird when you do go to do a reconciliation. So uh, keep that in mind. So personally, I would recommend that you consider inserting a new column, perhaps between C and D. And if I point my mouse on the letter D, do a right click and choose insert, you know, it will give me a new column. And of course, uh, we can make that column wider. Just grab that seam up there, uh, give it a new name, you know, whatever purpose you might want to have for that column. All right, I'm going to undo uh, those uh, couple quick changes and let's look at maybe another place that you would want to safely insert a column. Another good option might be uh, just before the subcategory column, so uh, between the H and I. So again, if I click, hold down on the I column heading and choose insert, uh, yeah, that might be another place that you'd want to insert uh, a new column. Okay, now uh, do keep in mind that if you were to add any additional columns to the spreadsheet, those columns will not be reflected in the dashboard or the reports. Uh, there's a lot of customization that would need to be done in Excel Power Query along within the pivot tables to make that happen and it's uh, beyond the scope of this particular video. All right, next uh, we'll take a look at customizing categories in the frequently used payees list. Uh, both of those items are covered in the full walkthrough videos for the Excel checkbook, but just as a quick visit, we'll go to the uh, settings worksheet. Now the settings worksheet is specific to the 2025 version of the Excel checkbook. The 2024 version has a worksheet called categories. Uh, yeah, but they do work uh, very similar. So when I uh, visit the settings worksheet and look for the categories table, you know, we have options for a subcategory category and category type. And absolutely, you can totally customize and change the wording um, or, or these entries as you know, would best fit your needs. And a couple quick tips related to adding entries or deleting entries. Uh, when, you're, when you have your cursor here in the category list, under the Excel's ribbon bar, you've got buttons for inserting and deleting cells. And you can safely click on like, let's say for example, the insert button and it will add a new blank row. Conversely, the delete button will delete any current row that you might have. And now be on the lookout for having a duplicate subcategory. In other words, we cannot have the, the word close listed twice, even if they are fall under different categories. Now you could have a different variation of the word close as a sub as a subcategory and that would work but uh, just keep in mind that uh, every subcategory word or phrase does need to be unique in the list now after adding or deleting any subcategories yeah it can be helpful to uh, potentially uh, sort this list you know a couple different options related to sorting if you visit the sort and filter button up here i do recommend perhaps looking at the custom sort choice under custom sort this is where you can this, uh, decide that you'd like to still maybe group things perhaps by category first before it then sorts on the subcategory column. So for example, if we tell Excel here that you know, we'd like the first sorting to happen at the category level, then we'll tell it to add an additional option here. And then next, let's have it sort by subcategory. So if we do that, click OK, we'll see that now all the, in my case, these business expenses are listed first, followed by charity, followed by discretionary. And lastly, before we leave this categories list, I do recommend having a blank row at the top. So if my cursor is here on this uh, first entry of advertising and I visit the insert menu, you know, that will add a blank row. Um, don't worry that it turned blue. Um, it's not gonna cause any issue, but uh, just because I'm a little tad OCD and I don't wanna see that, I will go visit the uh, background color here and tell it uh, no fill, just to have that show up like that. All right, now if you want to also make customization of the frequently used payees list, uh, same sort of thing, certainly just add additional entries to the list. Uh, also, you can make use of the insert and delete buttons to add blank rows in between things. And then when you're done, you know, again, you could use that sort and filtering button, custom sort, and choose to, in this case, maybe have it sort on maybe the subcategory first or, or just keep it alphabetized on the payees list. Totally up to you. All right, next, let's turn attention to the worksheet called Future Transactions. So for, for a lot of uh, customers, uh, they enjoy this feature, but they uh, are finding that they're adding a lot of frequent recurring transactions. And this default table 
uh, he only has you know maybe less than 20 rows in there. So how would you add additional rows? So for both Windows and Mac users, there's a tiny little corner button here, and you could just click click your mouse on that when you see that double black arrow, and then uh, drag down, and that will add additional table rows to the to this. Now you probably will want to move this little box around. So what I normally do is I'll click once, and then once I see this dashed line, I'll uh, just grab it and you know just drag it to a different location. So that's you know uh, easiest way to. Uh, just add more, increase the size of this is to, uh, to uh, grab that corner. You can also, if you're on the Windows version of Excel, visit the table design uh, menu choice and there's a resize table option here. And you just, you know, click and change that last number to a larger value. And that will certainly work as well. So I'll, I'll might make it uh, 32 and then click OK. And that also expands the size of that particular table. Now, the same technique does work in the registers. So if you find that you get to the bottom of a particular register and the alternating color uh, is coming to an end, well, that's letting you know that the uh, formatting as table um, is, uh, you know, only a certain size. So, for example, here in maybe these one of these later registers, as I scroll on down here, you know, eventually we'll find that the, uh, the alternating shading has stopped. There we go. So somewhere around uh, 2,000 rows. And again, if, if my, as long as my cursor is in one of these entries and I can visit that table design, tilt to resize the table, that's an option. Or uh, finding that last cell over here and just grabbing it and dragging it down to add more rows. All right, well, that's all for now. I uh, hope you enjoy it and thank you for watching.